Hello everyone, this is Sean, and this is just a short uh, video, I guess a preview for the next section of the DeLorean build. This is the back panel that goes behind the, uh, the seats of the DeLorean dashboard. I mean, the DeLorean cabin. And you can see what I did. I, I put the shiny white paint in the... Uh, time circuit area. Of course you can see how I'm going to have to put more at the top side. But what I did with the uh, the speed indicator for the car, I put the paint in the bottom three sections and I s wiped it off with the q-tips that was only left in the holes. Did the same thing with the yellow paint, though it wasn't quite as clean. And did the same thing with the red paint. Now you won't see much from the car, but as you can see from here, looks pretty good from a distance. But anyway, that's all for now, and talk to you all later. This will be the intro for part the next section. Bye-bye. Okay, so I'm back, continuing part six. And as you can see, I have finished coloring with silver and gold and black the uh, back dashboard section of the DeLorean including the uh, flux capacitor now it looks very black from in there but once the black paint dries I will go over the uh, time circuit prongs with a white so they show up better I guess one of the blacks needs to be fixed on this section here. Right there. Just one second. Okay, I'm back. So I redid uh, I redid this with the black. I've also marked the paint guide. Everything that's been detail painted. But because this uh, paint has to dry, you can't have it vertical yet. You have to have it horizontal before you put it in the uh, back section of the DeLorean. So I'll just put the uh, parts like this for now. And this will be the photo. Ooh, one minute. This will be the photo. For part 6a. That's what I'm doing from now on. I'm uh, segmenting my videos and each uh, section will have a specific a specific picture leading into it. But the thumbnail of the entire video will be one of those three pictures. Not sure which yet. It depends which one looks best. So that'll be the end for now. Part 6a. And I'll come back in a couple days when everything's dry and I can assemble the doors. That'll be step four. And then I can... Oh, there we go. Go on to step five and six. And before I put the windshield in step six, I'm going to have to do some uh, detail painting on the body. So I'll be uh, back, talk to you all later, and hope you have a good, had a good weekend. Bye-bye. Hello everyone, it's Sean, and this is part 6B of the Mark IV DeLorean build. What I did uh, earlier this evening is I put on the accessories for the Mark IV DeLorean. The uh, hoverboard, which you can see in the footwell. I had to angle it so I can still get the doors in place. And, of course, there is the train engine temperature gauge, green, yellow, and red. So what I'm going to do now is uh, attach the doors. Got to make sure that I put each door on the proper side. So number, number eight will go on the right. Number seven will go on the left. All right, so we'll start here and see how it goes.
Whoops. What's this supposed to be? There we go. Okay. So we got the pegs in there. Ah, here we are. So the pegs are supposed to fit. Oh, wait a minute. See that right there? That does not want to be on there because we still got to get the car around the body. Here we are. Just snip it off a little bit more. There we go. And of course, you have to do the same with this one. There you go. Yeah. That way you don't have anything interfering. Okay, so. Let's see how we do here. Try to do it on camera. So we got it aligned with the slots. Actually, I will uh, try to assemble it off camera and I'll be right back. Well, the first door turned out well. So all I have to do now is get some uh, Tamiya liquid cement onto the tabs from the outside so I don't disturb the paint. So there is that tab. Yep. And, you know, run it along the entire seam because we want to make sure that the glue can help the, uh, the door set in place. And, of course, underside. There we are. Okay, so that is the uh, right side. So now I'll take the left side off the sprue and I'll show you it attached. All right, so the uh, left side door is successfully in place. Just do a little uh, trimming right there. There we go. So I'll uh, flip it over and uh, Fix the slots with the glue here. So there you go. And then run the glue along the entire side to uh, seal it in place. There we are. Okay, so now the uh, interior bucket is all uh, assembled, as you can see. Actually, there. That way, the glue isn't set on something, and it doesn't accidentally glue itself to the bottom of the cardboard. All right. So that's about all for tonight. Uh, I'm going to the Hobby Club meeting in a few days on Saturday, so I'll be able to take more pictures and video then. But in the meantime, here is the interior bucket picture. With the doors attached, there's the front. Actually, let's see how we do here. There's the front. There is the passenger side, which shows both the hoverboard and the time, I mean the train temperature gauge. And here is the back which, again, shows the accessories, mostly. And if you look closely, you will see that, fortunately, the hoverboard does not interfere, is not interfering with the doors, so it's in there successfully. I just angled it nicely in the floorboards there. But I will have to uh, tamp it down a bit with the toothpick, because it is peeling up a little. But that way you don't get glue wrecking the seats or anything. You just use the stickers, uh, natural stickiness to, uh, roll it down onto the surface. So there we go. So that's, that's the end for now. I'm just going to mark up the guide and I'll be right back. Okay. So, uh, there is a step for the guide marked. 
with the assembly of the seats. So what I will do, um, not not tonight, because you want to give the glue time to set. I will uh, do to step five, well, maybe tomorrow night. I will assemble it to the interior bucket. Now I'm just going to check on the interior bucket though for a minute. Be right back. I was right. I thought I'd remembered. Yeah, you'll see that the interior bucket has these uh, slots here. See these little tabs? Well, they're like leftover mold pieces. So I'm going to have to carefully trim them off before I put the uh, the um, interior bucket on there. So let's see here. All right, so that's that one. Good. Don't cut off those two tabs, though. Just cut off the spare mold pieces that don't need to be there. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, there we are. Mm -hmm. So that's the back done. Good. All right. You see, I left it. Uh, didn't even primer it. I didn't want any paint to be in the way of the fit. Yeah, just a couple more to do now. Yeah, there we go. And of course, I can use uh, some of my files here to uh, file down any of those uh, sections. So that they're as flat as possible. But they should be uh, flat enough by now so that I can fit the uh, interior bucket in place. And that will be all I'll be doing uh, for tomorrow because then I have to uh, start working on the exterior body of the car which is going to be uh, step six you can see that here so i'll have to do the black pin striping and the medium gray and everything and then i move on to all the other steps you see after that's painted then you assemble it to the interior bucket and then you start attaching the pieces now i always ask myself what if i could put some of the smaller pieces onto the car itself before I attach it. Just so that you can actually get at the pieces from the back side. But then again, I realized something. Some of those tabs might on the backs of these pieces might actually interfere with being able to attach this into the proper back slot, as you can see. You see the back slot here? Well, if you had pieces coming in from the sides, they could interfere with the ability to slide it in place. So I'm actually going to stick to the actual assembly order of the DeLorean itself. So that's all for today. That's all I mean for tonight. And I will be back uh, tomorrow evening to do some assembly and uh, do some of the packing for the Hobby Club weekend itself because I have to, uh, you know, have some padding for the Enterprise B that I'm going to bring for display purposes and uh, for the DeLorean itself. So, talk to you all later. Hope you have a good night and we'll see you here for part 6C probably tomorrow. So, hope you're having a good week and talk to y'all later. Bye-bye. Hello everyone. Uh, it's Sean. I'm back again. And I am painting the uh, platinum and or silver on the bottom of the Mark IV DeLorean using the bottom of the 
Mark III DeLorean as my guide. I started with the platinum paint, but it didn't seem to uh, do that well, so I'm going to put the phone up on the tripod and we'll see if I can get better results with the uh, metallic silver sharpie. So I'll be right back with that. Oh, don't mind the noise in the background. That's the laundry. Okay, I'm back. So we'll try the... Uh, and pulls the... There, the noise shouldn't be as loud from the laundry machine. So we'll try the uh, platinum... We'll try the silver sharpie first. Not sure how precise I can get it. But we'll see. Oh yeah, that's better. Just turn the reference car so that I can see what I'm doing here. Oh yeah, that's better. There we go. It's amazing how Silver Sharpie actually does a better job than the paint. And you don't risk it running out in the middle of the uh, coloring. Of course, the other thing is it's not as, uh, sometimes it's not as precise, but if the parts are raised, it usually is. So I'll uh, continue working on the section and I'll come back and show you a midway update. Be back. All right, so I also have the Platinum Silver Sharpie. Well, it's the Bic marker, actually. You can see my progress on the uh, model so far. It wastes a lot less paint this way. So anyway, I'll uh, do some more. I'll come back and show you what it uh, looks like. Talk to you in a few minutes. All right, I'm back. So there is a uh, part. Not well, the bottom part. And actually, I'm going to go over the parts that I actually painted with the... Uh, silver sharpie just to smooth them out that way we actually get an even coverage it's amazing how the silver sharpie actually looks a lot better than anything else for painting the silver on the anything <laughs> but of course the downside is it's not as precise as a toothpick but this is the bottom of the car so it isn't too obvious. There. There we go. So there it is from all the angles. So I will turn the Mark III up right again. I have all the reference pictures for it I can use for tomorrow, so I won't have to worry about actually bringing it along. The only shift that's going to be making the trip. Correction, the only model that makes the trip is the 1400 scale Enterprise B. It's uh, too big to fit in its box, but I'll find another box to take it in, wrap it up carefully, maybe bring along my construct so I can maybe at the Model Club meeting fashion a proper stand for it. So that is all for now in this section of part, I believe it's part six of the Mark IV DeLorean. And I'll be packing up all the model supplies that I'm going to bring to the Hobby Club meeting. So I'll talk to you all later and hope you have a good weekend. And if any Star Trek fans in the audience enjoy watching Strange New Worlds at nine o'clock Eastern on CTV Sci-Fi Channel, for those of us in Canada, who are lucky enough to get it on a television station. Talk to you all later. Bye-bye. All right. Hello, everyone. This is Sean, and this is part six. I think it's D by now. D for detail painting. So what I will do is I will show you all the, uh, the details on the um, Mark IV DeLorean that I did during my hobby club meeting. So I'll just uh, arrange the camera here so that you can see the workbench properly. Be right back. Okay, here we go. So, we'll take a look at this uh, bag first. Just uh, make sure that everything's... Oh, great, it's in good view. There we go. 
let's see what I did here. What I did is I decided to brighten up the blue um, inside. Actually, I'm going to change that camera angle just slightly. One moment. There we go. That's better. All right. So I uh, I put the blue in the center of each. Um, there you go. Uh, time circuit free band, right? I did the uh, oh, toothpick for this. I did the red and the metallic blue. Uh, brackets on each of these cables. Not this one yet, because I don't know where it goes. And I did the detail painting on the, um, most of the detail painting on the um, Mr. Fusion. I did the, the black and the grill work. I did the black grill work here. And I did the red in front. You can see that there. And of course, the white. Now I'm going to have to do the black on the top. And I'm going to have to do the Mr. Fusion blue circle with the uh, black printing. And then of course you have these pieces. So I made sure not to paint the tabs. I just painted the blue and the black on both sides because I forget which way they go in. Although I think they go in with these uh, spikes on the black cable. And of course I did the same thing on this one. So you have the uh, the blue and you have the black wires and of course the black handle and the black band. I mean I used a toothpick and got as exact as I could. And of course you have the uh, the blue on the front bumper band as well. So I'm going to put uh, all the stuff away, get to the next bag and part 6 is D is pretty well going to be a summary of the detail painting so far. Okay I'm back again. Uh, there's just one piece I did the detail painting on this is the uh, panel for the top of the roof and I got all the colored buttons and the white screens on this one. And then you have the, um, the rear tail light. So I did the white and I did the red. What I have to do now is get some of the orange so I can actually try and do that on camera. Be right back. All right, I'm back. So I will carefully use my finest brush here to put the orange into each recess of the lights. Now forgive me if I'm not exactly in camera range while I'm doing this. I'll try to angle it. Oop, not that much. Now keep in mind I can wipe the orange off the black uh, bands Of course, and that's probably what I will do. All right, then just uh, set the there. That's the general idea, and then you just bat it down with the. Uh, paper towel or a q-tip and then the orange only stays in the recesses and that's why I painted the uh, this part spray painted it black first so that that effect would be realized so we'll try it again that worked a bit too well There you go, see? Now I got all three colors on there. So I'll set that part aside. I'll uh, get the water ready so I can clean the brush and I'll move on to whatever next color I have to do. All right, I'm back again. And I'm just uh, putting these pieces in the bag. Actually, I'm going to try with the toothpick, of course, the, uh, the paint adjustments on the Flux capacitor, now where do I put it? Sorry, not the flux capacitor, I already painted that. I made it brighter before the hobby clipping. I mean the um, Mr. Fusion, yes. So what I have to do is I have to grab the, um, 
the Mark III here, so I know exactly where to uh, paint everything. Okay, turn it that way. There we go. Oh, yes, I'm going to go need to grab my uh, Ultra Fine Black Sharpie. Be right back. All right, I'm back again. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, take my metallic blue sapphire here, and I am going to, with the toothpick of course, because it's the only thing really small enough and precise enough, carefully draw a circle at approximately the right spot. Ah, good, now I'm in camera range. Right about there. Well, there. That's good. Switch it around to the other side. Try to match the approximate location. Ah, see? I need to... Uh, that's a good thing about the toothpick. It never gets too much paint on it. So you have to refresh it with every paint stroke you take. Look. There. Perfect. There you go. So there is the blue on the uh, Mr. Fusion. But it's not it's not running down the side of the uh, well maybe I spoke too soon. Oh yeah I did. Look. It is running down that side. It's not running down that side. So let's, uh, I'll brace it this way. There. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to do the lettering just yet. I could. All right, you know, that is, uh, the one side is great. The other side, it's running too much. It's, uh, no, I, I take a closer look at that. That dot is A, it's a lot smaller. And B, it isn't running, so you know what I think. Uh, wipe that off. There we go. I'm going to go find a uh, blue... Ultra Fine Sharpie, be right back. Alright, I'm back again. Got the solution. I have the uh, Ultra Fine Blue Sharpie. And, of course, I have the big marking pen, so I'm going to test one on each side. Try to approximate the mm, size of the dot. Now, it won't be exactly the same color as the other one, but at least it'll be dry the moment it's on there. That's darker. It's quite darker. Okay, let me let me see here. Let me do the big marking pen on the other side. See how dark it is. Because you want to have that nice metallic blue look. Yeah, that is darker. All right, let me see here then. That's darker. I'm going to go look for the Stadler marker. Be right back. That's the thing about Sharpie. It's rather permanent. But if I do the Stadler marker over the dot, Making the dot a little bigger. Oh, actually, that is a bit better. That is a bit better. There we go. Oh, yes, that's it. I've got it. I've got the uh, metal gleaming. There you go. It's hard to see, but it's this blue Stadler marker here. It's the medium blue. So that's, that's, that's great. And I've already got the ultra fine black sharpie, so I'm just going to see if I can precisely write Mr. Fusion underneath it. Now it's got to be pointing the right way. So from this way, Mr. Fusion. I actually got it. No, you can't focus on it, but I'm just going to have the writing scroll on there anyway. Good, okay, so it's just a black scroll. You're not going to see a great detail. And there is one last thing to do, and that is I'm actually going to use the 
ultra fine black sharpie on the very top like it is on the mark III. that way it's a lot more precise and it won't risk uh, dripping down onto the uh, onto it yeah like that see there we go so now you have that piece complete as well and it nothing's dripping Okay, so there should only be one uh, piece left to look at, and that is the body of the DeLorean itself. So, what I did is I, I did the gray on the hood, the light, the light gray. I did the black in here. Ooh, oh, I see. I'm going to need the uh, orange again on those lights. Yes, all right. Mm-hmm. Might as well turn to the seven left again because it's the best way to get it precisely without actually damaging anything or spilling any paint over. But if the shade of orange is oh well it's uh too dark. I'm going to have to use that testers after all. I'll be right back. Folk art, pearl, mandarin, satin. I'm going to try that in that area of the car and see if I can actually get a uh, good result here. So just, there you go. Maybe a little more. There we are. All right, so I'm going to try to do this on camera. All right, so right in there we go. Hey, that's that's pretty good. It's uh, that it is pretty close to the tester's turn signal amber, which I'm sure I brought with me, but I can't find at this moment. There we go. Of course, it's going to be covered up by the band, but. You get the idea. Now, GMC, or the CMC in the front of the grill, well, you, it's black. So what I'm going to do, actually, is use the Tamiya black um, panel wash accent. There we go. As I... I've got it here. Not only is it a very thin brush and it's much more precise than, well, okay, that's kind of a obvious sentence, I guess. A very thin brush, so of course it's more precise, yes. All right, so I will lean the car this way. It's not in the water. We're fine. But the reason I'm going to lean the car that way when it's resting is so that so that the uh, panel line wash only gets in those grills and nowhere else. So I think I've got it focused on the object. Okay, focus on my finger. Now we'll have to see. Here we go. Wow, look at that. It did everything, and it left the raised letters in place. That panel line accent is wonderful. And of course, you can see how I left the silver here, the lower black bumper, the upper gray bumper. Now, let me check on the actual car. Ah, wait a minute. I'm going to have to go over that gray bumper with the... Uh, the darker gray. So I'm going to go, I'm going to do that. When I find it, I'll be right back. Might as well do that on camera too. How are we doing here? 15 minutes. My hopeful goal here is to mostly do the uh, final detail painting. I mean, there is one uh, black stripe 
on the left of the car I haven't done yet, plus the bottom black quarter panel. But I can at least put the darker gray on the car here. Here we go. I can at least do that. Having a bit of trouble here. Okay, there we go. Trying to get it to be smooth. It's it's difficult. I mean the light one, it went on pretty smooth. The darker one isn't as much. But there you go. Okay, good. There's the result. It'll it'll fix itself. What I found sometimes is if you water down the gray paint just slightly, it actually goes on more smoothly but still retains the color. You don't you don't see the brush strokes even though it's hand painted. That's a little trick I discovered with the uh, thousand scale NX NX01, yeah, for detail painting, uh-huh, and also the Excelsior, because I had to do the um, painting on the Excelsior. I had to replace one of the decals with paint that was a close match, and I realized if I got the paint a bit runny, watery, it still retained the color mostly. All right, so just a little, see, where you uh, use the Q-tip here and get any excess off the car. Or just use the uh, toilet paper here should be able to get it or if any in any case you can also use the uh, toothpick itself should be able to get in there and get the uh, paint off oh there we go it still works Good, okay. So I'm going to actually use the more precise brush in this case because it'll have a better effect, I think. And all I have to do now is go in on this angle, in this area. There we go, see? There we are, there, perfect. Just make it smooth, there. There we are. Now you can see how I did the black line here. Now you could be asking, why is the black line messy on the right side and not messy on the left side? Well, I discovered the toothpick trick. So actually I am going to get that black paint out again. I think it was the satin and I'll use the toothpick for it. So I'll be right back. Here we go satin folk art paint with the toothpick and uh, taking a bit of a risk doing this on camera but you don't have to do the masking and risk the uh, metal paint job on the car getting wrecked if you approach it from the top so that's what i'm doing carefully approach it from the top 
like so. Sorry if I'm off uh, camera for a bit. Well, that, that kind of got it in the middle, so you can see there. So actually, that's that's pretty good. And also, it's not just from the top. You want to approach it from the bottom as well, but you want to make sure that you are pointing always not towards the car. But you're pointing away from the car. And if you can't get the black paint to do what you want, because not, not really, not at this moment, then what you want to do is use your ultra fine black sharpie again and attack the paint line from underneath that way. Still get the color on the car. but it will be much more precise. Now, if I'm careful, very careful, I should be able to approach it. There you go. From on top. There, see? I got it from on top, and it didn't wreck the car. So then you go along, from the side, all the way front to back, and then you go from the bottom, there, see? That's perfect. Now, let's see here. You have to go along this side, there you are, good. And, of course, you have to go along the front right, because you didn't get that yet. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay, now you go along the side of it. There you go. And don't worry about this smudge here, because there is a time circuitry band that'll cover it. And you go at the part from underneath. There you go. That's that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay. Um what else? I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Oh yes. You will have to do this bottom quarter panel here on either side of the wire. So I will use the fine brush. Oh my god, 24 minutes. Well, I'll try to cut this down a bit, but there's there's very little left. I, I'd like to make this the last part of uh, <clears throat> six. So I'm going to actually do the final black. I'm going to do the final red and yellow, so I'll be right back. I'm back. I did uh, the other black section. You can see it there. I used the Q-tip to get the black off of there. It, it's good. You don't have to do a lot of complicated masking. So what I'm going to do first with the red is I'm going to um, do the missing se sections of the wires here, you know. Red interspersed with the with the uh, yellow there 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 there. And there, okay, so that's the, see, the front section. Red and yellow, red and yellow. Only the top, because that's all you really see.
Okay, good. And there's the uh, back part. So now I might as well, since I have the red out, now let's make it match. So second one down, alternate, alternate again, alternate. That gets rid of any black that might be on the wire too. Okay, good. Oh, better uh, get the top here. Oh, too much, too much. So I will uh, do this side and be back. Okay, I'm back. So I did the um, red and yellow on the left side as well. So that is the final detail paint. Ooh, ooh, see that smudge? Mm -hmm. Better take care of that. If I can, I'm um, going to refresh the water and be right back. All right, the water's refreshed. I'm going to try to use the Q-tip on this black paint here. Get that off. And if I can't, then it's time to use the toothpick itself, which has usually had some success in the past. Oh, there we go. See? That's a great thing. You can get, use the toothpick. You get everything off. It doesn't damage, or it shouldn't, the underlying paint. And toothpick a bit more. Ah, oh, there we go. Yeah, that's mostly good. And you know what? This car was going along behind a train. So it would have got all the black soot on it from the train. So I'm not going to be so concerned by the time the DeLorean gets to the Mark IV stage about perfection or... Uh, cleanliness or if, if black gets all over the place or anything like that I'm just going to say that that is part of the plot line because well take a, take a look at the mark three for instance now granted I made it deliberately dusty but you can see there's paint spots worn off it there's all this smudging on this side now granted you say that's because it was in a mine for 75 years and you know the paint job got all scratched up and dusty and dirty and everything so if that happens to the Mark IV, then that is just par for pun, the course. So I'm not going to worry if it gets fingerprints and dusty and everything. But, you know, the, now that the body is complete, that is the final uh, stage for the DeLorean. Now, I still have a... Strange. You, you, you see these slots back here. Yes, but you see there's a slot ledge there. Now that could be what the other uh, tray fits underneath, and then this slot, the other one, fits on top. So I'm concerned that if you put the headlights in, you won't be able to get... But I think you should, because I think the slots on the body of the car... Oh, look, look, that's thin. That isn't. But that is. That's thin enough. It'll fit in between the headlights on top of that slot there. It's uh, designed to fit exactly inside. So I don't think there's going to be a problem if I put the, uh, the headlights in the car. But that is going to be the subject of part seven. Seven assembly. Sounds almost correct. So that'll be the end of part 6D and with it all of part 6 because that's the end of the detailed painting.
except for one piece, which is uh, the front of the, the hood ornament. I'll call it a hood ornament, even though it's the time circuitry tray, but you don't have to worry about this tray until it's time to put it on the hood of the car, which is one of the last steps. So I'm not going to count that as the main detail painting section. Not at all. So that'll be uh, it for part six here now. The DeLorean Mark IV is all detail painted. Now part seven is going to be the assembly. That's going to be a bit more difficult. I'm not going to try and fit the car on assembled on camera any more than I'm going to try to fit the glass in. The glass is here. I still have to do those black bands, but I'll I'll show it already done. And this is good because uh, tomorrow, Friday, I will be posting part f five of the DeLorean build. So now I'm only going to be one week behind. That's pretty good. And next week, I'll post part six. And hopefully by then, I'll be working on part seven. Because September, I was about 20 parts behind. <laughs> Don't mind me, I just discovered the uh, telescoping feature on the uh, camera. It, it went up quite high. I mean, I'm, I'm going to stand up and I'm going to bring the camera up with me. Watch this. I'm standing up now. And the camera is coming up this high. Wow. So now I can stand up and do the, uh, you know, the outro of each video. Well, that's, that's, that's quite something. Anyway, that's the, uh, that's the end of the DeLorean part six. All the detail painting is complete except for the windows. And I'm going to do that off camera as the precursor for part seven. And so I will uh, see you all next time.